For six years now, we have been holding this important event in order to promote Palestinian rights and give them a voice. This year, we're virtual, and we have a record-breaking number of attendees and advocates trained and ready to advocate for racial justice at home and for justice in Palestine with their members of Congress. American Muslims for Palestine still found a way for so many people from across the country to come together virtually. Uh, we have almost 150 confirmed congressional meetings. Uh, over 20 of them are with members of Congress themselves. You are part of the largest and best organized advocacy day for Palestinian rights than I have ever seen. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing without your work, your advocacy, and um, the opportunity to, uh, to work together. I know the truth about what happens in Palestine, and I know the truth about what happens to our taxpayer dollars. There, I have seen it firsthand, and again, cannot thank all of you enough for your incredible advocacy and, and your support. I'm going to keep working with my colleagues in the Congress to ensure that these issues are addressed in a real, meaningful way. That's why I will continue working hard in Congress to address the mistreatment of Palestinians. This means changing U.S. policy to ensure our taxpayer dollars are not used to subsidize and legitimize Israel's violation of international law. Israel is not a democracy. Israel is an apartheid state that brutally suppresses the indigenous population of Palestine. With our oppressors uniting, it's becoming increasingly clear that all our struggles for freedom are interconnected and that no one will be free until we are all free. So as people of conscience, we need to continue to support organizations like AMP, grassroots organization activists and operatives who continue to lead and shift lawmakers towards a right space. I also want to thank uh, American Muslims for Palestine because you are really uh, stepping in in a place where there has been not just vacuum, but distortions, labeling, Islamophobia, racism, xenophobia, uh, even anti-Semitism in an area where the Palestinian narrative was excluded, where the Palestinian reality was distorted. But the promotion of liberty and human dignity for Palestinians is nothing without your work. The struggle for Palestine is a long-term one. It's not one event, it's not one conference, but it is actually the dedication of looking for the long-term and the changes that are we, we are witnessing in the United States. Public opinion is changing in your work, the BDS campaign, the AMP's advocacy days, and so many other efforts are having an impact. We stand for BDS and we're not ashamed of it. This is a constitutional right. These rights that are guaranteed in the, our own constitution are not given to us unless we demand them and we fight for them. And how do we fight for them? Through the system. How do we fight for them? Is by changing the public opinion. How do we fight for them? Is by applying pressure on our politicians. How do we fight for them? By saying and stand tall as Americans and say, look, we're not going to accept to be treated less or we're not going to accept to criminalize what we stand for in terms of justice and equality and freedom for the Palestinian people. But I will tell you, your attendance today, your participation, just by us holding this advocacy day, and it is you who made it a success, by committing to it, we have accomplished a lot.